first of all, thank you for the opportunity to meet with you and a few words about your visit in Georgia, what kind of meetings you have here. It was actually the reason to take part in this McCain's Institute conference, uh, but since coming to Tbilisi it's always very good to have meetings and I'm very glad that it was possible to, to, to meet all leadership of Georgia once again to, to talk about all issues of importance, uh, be it European agenda or security, NATO, uh, so regional development, uh, really I'm satisfied with the, with the meetings and uh, I believe we have to come here really on a regular basis, uh, that's important not only to, to, to talk and meet in Brussels but also to see how things are developing here. So I had opportunity also uh, second time this year to come here to Georgia because I took part in Batumi conference uh, also for the first time, never before. So uh, Georgia was very high on the agenda this year. The EU faces one of the biggest migrant crises in its history, but Georgia has received uh, some kind of promise that if we fulfill all the given tasks, we will get visa-free regime with Europe. What is your opinion? Would the ongoing crisis obstacle for Georgia? Ongoing crisis is indeed a challenge to, to Europe and one of the biggest challenges in European history, definitely. But uh, maybe, maybe that could create some uh, some thinking about all issues uh, uh, which has to do with the movement of people but I believe and I, 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 I have no doubt that uh, Georgia is on the right track, uh, may, made very good reforms, very important reforms, timely and deserved to, to get the visa free. I hope that the Commission report uh, will be positive in this regard. So. It's, it's coming and, and th that could be really something very tangible for people, what I wish, wish to happen as soon as it is, is it's, it is possible. So in spite, just to cut it short, in spite of all these, uh, these messy, messy developments with regard to the immigration, I do not think that we should stop uh, the process which, which was really done according to the rules uh, and we shouldn't invent new rules in the process or erase new obstacles, uh, no, it sh shouldn't be fear, fear. And, and that's, uh, that explains that I believe that this could happen. And Russia has signed so-called integration agreement with Georgian breakaway territories of Abkhazia and South Ossetia. Separatists in Tsinvali are talking about full integration with Russia. Occupants are continuing so-called borderization process in Georgian territories. How Georgian friends, NATO and EU states can stop Russia for, from the annexation of Georgian sovereign territories? All aspects of violations of uh, national law, uh, they cannot be neglected, uh, be it uh, in Ukraine or uh, in Moldova or now we're talking uh, about this borderization as you said in Georgia. I, I believe that this is what happened uh, because of these so-called agreements with so-called republics of South Ossetia and Abkhazia. It's uh, in other words saying also de facto annexation of these territories. And this is to be considered like that. Uh, definitely we have to keep this item on the agenda on permanently and raise these issues on any occasion besides other violations of international law. And this is the only way to keep pressure. So uh, what the international community must do, and we can reiterate once again, not only on behalf of Lithuania and definitely, but also on behalf of European Union that we strongly support territorial integrity and sovereignty of Georgia and uh, these, these, these uh, regions which are now currently under, under occupation, so to say, they must, must be released. Politicians from uh, Baltic state are saying a lot that Western countries does not act strictly enough on the aggressive politics of Russia. How do you explain that? Different legacy, different experience, uh, you know, maybe sometimes different different problems uh, because regions are uh, you know far away from each other and uh, you mentioned migration for instance so it's very felt very much in South European countries in, G in, in Greece in Italy in particular I would say in particular and when we're talking about some uh, 
uh, contentious is issues, issues abroad. Uh, it seems that Libya is very far away, but it's 100 kilometers from Lampedusa, Italian island, and it's very close to Italy. So um, this explains maybe when some another crisis uh, just uh, occupying more, more time and it attracts more, more attention. But uh, we always uh, stressing that uh, while solving one crisis, crisis shouldn't be done at the expense of other, other crises. And uh, that maybe explains sometimes that our reaction, I also said not, not once and not twice publicly, uh, sometimes too little, uh, sometimes too late. And this is exactly uh, wrong. We have to do more. Uh, definitely we cannot uh, do reforms for these countries, in particular also for Georgia. Georgia will do herself, and uh, definitely that, that's true. But, but we really can, can assist sometimes maybe in a more robust way. And uh, this is really our task. So I believe uh, current situation around, not only in this region, but also in other regions, reminds us that uh, these issues cannot be neglected. Lithuania was one of the first countries expressing its concerns about so-called treaty between Russia and the occupied region of Abkhazia and South Ossetia. Do you think that Russian policy does not only a uh, threat of the security of Georgia or to the whole region? Uh, I have no doubt it has uh, to do not only with this region but also with uh, peace structure in the world because let's, let's not forget that Russia is a uh, permanent member of UN Security Council uh, with a veto right. Uh, the Security Council which is supposed to be on guard of peace uh, structure in the world. And the on only legal, legal basis to act, uh, enforce uh, decisions, it uh, goes uh, under the UN Security Council. So when a member uh, does uh, that thing and I mean uh, exercise, exercises aggression against neighboring country, uh, I have in mind uh, Ukraine, annexation of Crimea, all these, these processes in, in, in South Caucasus also. This is not only a regional problem, it's a problem of, uh, of a world, so to say, and uh, indeed undermines uh, all, all, all principles which were agreed so far by nations. And this is really a problem of, of all of us, I would say being in, in Europe but also in other continents because it could create precedent. The leaders of the NATO member states are saying that Georgia will become the member state of alliance when it is be ready for that. But some experts consider that main factor is Russia and not Georgia. How do you think if Georgia in the near future satisfies all parameters, will it become the member state of NATO or not? I believe, yes, uh, time will come. Uh, it's not easy and uh, you mentioned Russia. I would say all factors are important because all the process of NATO expansion, enlargement, it's uh, ex exceptionally on voluntary basis. No, no one forcing countries to get in. The countries are trying to get in themselves and some of them are spending a lot of time in this way, like for instance Macedonia, right? So we were in the same in the same, so to say, package of Vilnius 10, I remember when we were trying to get into NATO and uh, so some countries already in but some still still working and it's not easy. So uh, the process itself should uh, bring more security to the region overall. So of course all factors should be, should be taken into account but it cannot be any veto right of the third country in the, in the way of integration. It's a sovereign choice of every country definitely to fulfill all criteria and also decision of NATO, where we need consensus. Sometimes the uh, situation is uh, very lengthy, very difficult. I can tell from our experience and my personal experience, uh, we were never promised to be members of NATO, or vice versa. We, we were told many times that we will never be members. So it's a big difference, right, if you agree? Uh, and that's my message to Georgians. So keep moving, uh, keep uh, implementing reforms. Uh, when time will come, you must be ready. But if time will come and you will not be ready because of some reasons, demotivation, frustration, looking for those who are guilty or those who are not helping enough, it's always the case. But the best choice, don't, don't complain, keep working and that, that will be done. Of course, uh, patience is needed, but not just patience. Patience means, means uh, sit and wait. Uh, you cannot sit and wait. Uh, time is running and you must uh, continue with the reforms. And that's the best advice I can give. And our example, uh, of uh, way to NATO, these uh, actions of demotivation and uh, as I said with regard to Lithuania, maybe would, be, would serve as example to you 
to, to be optimistic. I personally believe that you will be members of your Atlantic family. It's a matter of time. Uh, it's also 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 a subject of your choice. And your choice, as a, the choice of any sovereign country, must be respected by international community. Mm -hmm. And in this case, do you think that the steps of Georgia towards your Atlantic integration are enough? Is there any problematic fields that should be improved to help this process? Of course, you have to streamline all structures, proce procedures, make full use of existing m mechanisms, and you have really some tools, additional tools in your possession. Uh, you have this joint training center recently opened, right? This is a substantial package which in, 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 in support of the Georgian efforts uh, to, to conduct this integration, so to say, process into NATO, basically. You have a special commission with NATO, NATO-Georgian commission, where you can sit and talk just about agenda of bilateral interest. You have a lot of leverages and to streamline internal procedures, to get to NATO standards, uh, some, some work to be done. So experts uh, needed to work quite intensively in Ministry of Defense, for instance, what I would advise to do. Okay, thank you for your time. Once again, it was very great thank pleasure you for your to meet with you. Appreciate it. Thank you.